Hi, welcome to Bosch's workshop. Now I'm here today to find out if you can service a hybrid or full EV vehicle just the same way you can an internal combustion engine car. Well, we've got all the parts, we've got the equipment, and we do the training too. Over the years, the engine bays of our internal combustion engines have been getting more and more complicated as more and more bits have been bolted on to try and arrest those emissions. In particular, carbon dioxide. There's no getting away from it. If we're going to keep on burning hydrocarbon-based fuels, then we're going to keep on generating greenhouse gases. So actually, the best way to reduce those harmful emissions is to actually stop burning the stuff altogether. Which is why we now have electric and hybrid vehicles to deal with in the workshop. But even though hybrids and full EVs are simpler and have far fewer components in the engine bay, they still need to be serviced because there are still wear and tear parts that are going to need replacing. Now those wear and tear parts are almost exactly the same as the ones you'd be fitting to those of an internal combustion engine car, even if there's less of them. But there is one rather significant, slightly hair raising, and in fact some would say utterly shocking <laughs> difference. And that is a high voltage battery. The high voltage battery can be anything from 200 to around 800 volts. And it needs to be made safe by isolation before at least some of the service work can commence. Replacing the 12 volt battery on a hybrid or full EV is just as safe as it would be doing so on an internal combustion engine. And again, in rather like that sort of vehicle, you could find the battery in the front or the rear of the car. Interestingly, even on a full EV with a massive, great big high voltage battery packed full of electrons, it still relies on this little tiny 12 volt battery to power all of its other systems. So it's comforting to know that it's nice and simple to fix. To keep the occupant safe in a hybrid or battery electric vehicle, the manufacturers hide the high voltage cables which are double insulated, normally under the floor or tucked away in some special coving just to make sure they're right out of the way. And that means that things like HEPA filters and cabin filters are also perfectly safe to actually change. And in this particular case on the Prius, it's also very simple. Simple things like front and rear wipers are easy and safe enough to fit on any car. Changing the air filter on your hybrid's internal combustion engine is a nice easy job, particularly on the Prius, but it's also perfectly safe to do, as would be checking your fluid levels, like your oil, your brake fluid, and of course even the two coolants in this particular case. As you might expect, just like an ICE car, electrical components that sit on the 12 volt system, things like headlight bulbs or indicators, are actually perfectly safe to check and to replace. But there are other things under the bonnet which can get a bit more complicated or even dangerous. What makes working on hybrids like our Prius so potentially hazardous is actually the same thing that makes them magically hybrid. In the case of the Prius, it's called a power split device and it's actually a planetary gear set just deep inside this assembly here. Now, the Prius actually has two electric motors and the internal combustion engine which sits on the side here and is represented by this little crank handle. Now you can see here you've got the motor generator one. Normally it would have all the windings on the outside of that, so that's the stator, that's the rotor. And you can imagine, of course, that one of the interesting things about a hybrid is they normally don't have alternators or starter motors, so they actually use one of these motors. So if we were to spin up motor generator one, you can see that the crank handle starts to spin around. So that's actually going to be starting up the internal combustion engine, and of course once that's going for it, once it's at a nice efficient speed, then it's going to be spinning 
the motor generator one and of course that's actually going to generate some charge so you can charge up your 12 volt house battery or your main battery pack and that's really where the main hazard comes from when it comes to working on a hybrid because basically even if you think the ignition was off and the batteries were still actually connected if there was a problem then of course the brain might still be on and it might still try to demand that the motor starts up so you can actually charge up the batteries in which case then if your fingers are anywhere near those moving parts it could be all hell breaking loose. you could be happily minding your own business trying to change a spark plug and then suddenly the engine would just start up for no particular reason giving you a face fall. <laughs> Equally we could be working away down here on the water pump or trying to change one of the drive belts and suddenly that infernal combustion engine could kick in again with disastrous results. <laughs> Now imagine you were doing an oil change and suddenly that pesky engine was to jump into life. Running an engine without any oil rarely ends well. Because of all those hard, sharp gears inside the gearbox, even just checking the gearbox oil level with your pinky finger obviously could, if the engine was to start up, end in two. Now with any hybrid or full EV, it's very easy to see where the high voltage cables are running because they're going to be covered in this bright orange plastic sheath. But inside that, there's also a rubber bit of insulation as well to make sure that you don't get anywhere near those high voltage cables. But there are a couple of jobs where there could be a bit of extra risk. You can imagine if you're trying to undo this little oil filter, for example, you get your pliers on there. Maybe you were to slip, maybe you were to actually break through both layers of insulation. Well, then, of course, then your tool and you would be touching that high voltage supply. And of course, that could definitely make sense to actually turn off that supply so you know there's definitely no risk of anything bad happening. So coming back to our wear and tear parts, when it comes to maintaining steering and suspension, things like track rod ends, ball joints, CV joints, all that kind of stuff, it'll be the same pain in the butt as it is to work on an internal combustion engine car as it would be to work on a hybrid or full EV. But when it comes to working on the brakes, well then things could get a little different. Now imagine you're working away on the brakes and that little motor was to kick in. Now of course, if the gearbox arrangement was such that it was relying on the wheels being in contact with the ground to stop them spinning when they're up in the air, they may actually spin the whole thing around. <laughs> Thankfully, that isn't the case with the mechanics of the Prius, but on another hybrid, it might be slightly different. So the safest policy is just to make sure that the vehicle is completely made safe before you start work. But for that, I need to do a course. IMI level two, pass, bosh. Right, so now I've done that course, I'm qualified and therefore safe to make the vehicle safe. The next thing I need to do is disconnect my house battery. Now on the Prius, and in fact most cars at the moment, it's 12 volts, but in the future, that'll go up to about 48 volts. But 48 volts is still deemed to be low voltage and therefore inherently safe. Now, obviously anything over 60 volts DC, anything over 30 volts AC is considered high voltage and dangerous. And obviously this battery pack is actually about 200 volts. So obviously we do need to disconnect it. But the interesting thing is the house battery does exactly that job. Not only is it used to control things like the ignition, the stereo, the headlights, all that kind of stuff. But it's also used to energize the contactors which live inside the battery pack. Now the contactors are high voltage, high current relays. And the idea is that obviously when that energizes, that's what connects that high voltage battery to the rest of the systems of the inverter and things inside the car. So once that's disconnected, that means the contactors cannot be energized. And that means already we've got a, a sort of a level of safety because theoretically this pack can't be connected to the front of the vehicle. Now the first thing I need to do is make sure I've got my right PPE gear. These are class 0 1000 volt gloves and they even come with a special leather protective outer sleeve to make sure that they don't get damaged. But to make sure they're not damaged I need to do two things. I need to check the date which is just written here normally on the glove. It's in date. So the second thing I need to check is that the glove has no splits or holes. So I'll do a special test. 
basically using air pressure, I'm just going to basically spin this round until I've got air. And I'm going to use my eyes or the sensitive parts of my skin just to see if I can feel any air leaking out of the glove. Because if there's a leak out, then it means there's obviously some kind of hole and therefore that means metal or some sort of dangerous part of the car could actually then get to my skin, which we would not want. We need the insulation. So now having proven that that's okay, I can pop that into position and then pop on the glove as well. Do the same on the other side. Again, definitely no leaks, which is all good. So pop on the gloves, pop on the outers. And then I can go to the back of the car for the next stage. Having already donned my safety gloves, there's a few other things I've done as well to make the area safe. So I've actually got a cordon around the outside, got some stickers to let anybody else know in the area that I'm working on this vehicle. I'm even standing on a rubber mat. But the main thing I'm going to worry about with electricity is making sure it doesn't go across the heart, which is obviously why I'm wearing the gloves. But just to double, double check, I'm actually going to put one of these behind my back and then I can actually have a look at removing that sort of service plug just down there. So I'm just going to lift that up. And then peel it out and there we go that's now removed so i put that along with the ignition key in a safe place so nobody else can then rearm everything while i'm working at the front of the vehicle now interestingly the service plug or isolator plug does two jobs the first thing is when you disconnect it it actually divides the battery pack into two halves in the case of the prius it's actually uneven halves but essentially it takes that high voltage and breaks it down into two lots of slightly lower high voltage the other thing it does it actually has a fuse a high current fuse inside that service plug so again when it's all connected up is another fail safe in that high voltage system now it might seem a little bit overkill wearing the gloves and having one hand behind the back and when you're trying to remove a plug which has clearly been designed to make sure that there's no way you can touch the high voltage supply but it's all about belt and braces being as safe as absolutely possible because let's face it nobody wants to be killed to death fatally particularly by a Prius. Now the next part of the process in making this vehicle safe is actually waiting for five minutes. Have a cup of tea. Basically what I'm going to try and do is make sure that all the electrons packed into the capacitors that sit in the inverter on top of the engine have actually had time to dissipate. And while I'm doing that, I can also get a few other bits ready. I can get my test meter ready. This is a Cat4 600 volt test meter. I'm going to set it to voltage. First of all, just to make sure that the screen kind of wakes up. But the next thing I'm going to do, because I've got a battery here, and although this is a low voltage battery, I can still make sure something is going on look at that so that's 10 and a half volts so definitely that's working nicely and now to get myself some proper high voltage tools you can see these ones are insulated all over the place so again there's no way of actually getting a circuit between you and the thing you're undoing and now the five minutes is up i can actually undo the cover of our inverter So just like with the rear of the vehicle, again, I'm making sure I'm standing on a rubber mat. I'm actually not touching the body of the vehicle, even though it's actually plastic. And I'm using our high voltage tools and only one hand to undo those various bits and pieces. Now all the bolts are undone, I can now remove the cover. And obviously this is the inverter. This is where all the magic happens. You've got a whole load of capacitors here. And of course you've got your DC going in and then you've got your AC obviously coming out down through these three points just down here. But now I need to do another check. Before I can do any more work on the vehicle, I need to back do two checks. I need to check there is no high voltage coming from the battery pack because obviously we think we've isolated that. I want to make sure there's nothing there. So then I'll need my multimeter. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is just connect up to terminal down here coming in from the battery pack so that's the negative side that's the positive side and you can see we have no volts which is great so as we expected we've disconnected the battery the high voltage battery and now there's nothing here but then just to be absolutely sure because of all the capacitors here hanging on to all of that electricity hopefully they're just charged by now but just to be doubly safe we're also going to then check the voltage there as well so we're going to connect onto that side and again connect onto that side Again, we've got no voltage showing, so the capacitors are definitely drained out as well, and we definitely haven't got any high voltage coming from the battery pack, which means this car is now safe to work on, so I can do all of those servicing jobs. And in fact, if I did another course, a level three, I could actually also then work on things like the AC compressor, so high voltage isolated components, but all of that is a job for another day.